It's really weird because um, I don't know why it's different, but when I press play or record now, it goes black and then I have to wait a few seconds before it goes clear. Anyway, hello, <laughs> Satnam, it's me, Shakti Sundari, back with you today for the next reading from the Radiant Sutras. And um, today we are on Yukti verse 104. Can't believe it. Um, it seems as if having gone into a lot of specifics and um, yeah, very specific practices as we are getting to the tail end of these meditation practices, um, the focus is becoming more broad. It's, you know, like some really broad brush stroke um, suggestions and invitations and reminders for how to regard and live life in the constant remembering of its wonder and of our true nature as divine. So happy to be reading to you. Um, yeah, it's been a, been a lovely and busy day today, starting off with my Kundalini yoga class this morning and um, a client this afternoon. So feeling very good and very happy to be reading these verses now. So Yukti verse 104 from the Vijnana Bhairava Tantra. Yat avidyam, yat agrahyam, yat shunyam, yat a bhavagam, tat sarvam bhairavam, bhavyam tad ante bodha sambhava. Isn't that beautiful? Let me read it again. Yat avidyam, yat agrahyam, Yat shunyam, yat abhavagam, tat sarvam bhairavam, bhavyam tadante bodha sambhava. You know, I really get the sense when I read these sutras that I am reading something sacred and profound. And here is Lauren Roche's English translation. Holiness permeates everywhere. Senses cannot grasp it. Images cannot represent it. It is totally free. Free to appear as form. Free to be beyond form. Heart and body and mind in unison. Attend to the unimaginable. In the intercourse of unknowable and known, an awakening will be born in you as you join with that reality which you already are. Hi, Oliver. And again, as another paradox, today's verse contradicts in a way some of the other things have been said before. Holiness permeates everywhere. Now that's not a contradiction. We've been hearing that message and feeling that message and being reminded of that message again and again and again. So even that one line, you know, you could take that and make that your meditation for the day. Holiness permeates everywhere. Everything that you touch, taste, see, smell, imagine, visualize, experience, everything, whether you label it good or bad, is holy, is divine. Holiness permeates everywhere. But then the verse says, senses cannot grasp it. Images cannot represent it. So we have this sense of the holiness, the divine being elusive in that sense. 
which is a slight contradiction or is a contradiction or a paradox from some of the other verses where we're invited to go fully into an image or fully into one sense or many senses in order to experience the divine, right? So now this verse is saying, holiness is in everything, everywhere. Therefore, senses cannot grasp it. Images cannot represent it. It is totally free. Hmm. Well, that makes sense because if it's everywhere, it's infinite and eternal and beyond anything that would try to limit it in some way, right? It is totally free. Free to appear as form. So is this form, this one body or these things around me like my beautiful teacup here that I'm drinking um, jasmine and rose tea from? Cheers. Holy. <laughs> it's totally free. Free to appear as form. Free to be beyond form. Form and formless. The polar opposite aspects of all of life, right? The divine masculine, pure consciousness. The divine feminine, that which is manifest. That which is created. That which we can grab hold of the form being the feminine the formless being the masculine in their highest expressions in their highest senses holiness is totally free free to appear as form free to be beyond form heart and body and mind heart body and mind in unison i love that all of these aspects of our being are brought onto the same page as equal, as um, vital, as integrated. So, you know, just using the mind, just going through meditation or consciousness to reach the divine misses out the body and misses out the heart. So sometimes we can meet people who are, have been meditating for years and they have a really supremely awakened consciousness, this very steady, clear, calm, awakened mind, but perhaps their hearts are closed. Or perhaps we meet someone whose heart is so open and so overflowing with love, but they're cut off from their sexuality and their body. And in this practice, I guess we are aiming to embrace all as equal and all as one and integrate all. One is not higher than the other or one is not lower than the other. Heart and body and mind in unison attend to the unimaginable so mind cannot conceive of the holiness that permeates everything. It's like you do your head and if you try and figure it out with your human ego mind, right? The human ego mind cannot conceive of that. And yet, as one, as one integrated being with all our centers aligned, we can actually become one with that and attune to that from a different space. In the intercourse of unknowable and known. So this is once again, I want to get my Shiva Shakti um, statue where the divine masculine and the divine feminine are sitting together in Yab Yam. So the feminine sits on the masculine. She sits on Shiva. He is unmoving, unwavering consciousness and she is the creative life force that manifests all that is and together they dance and together they make love intercourse right the intercourse of unknowable and known and in that dance of those two elements the two um essential building blocks of all of existence i don't want to call them building blocks but an awakening will be born in you. 
you can take that on many levels but ultimately when those two aspects of your being are equally balanced you will experience the union within what we call the divine union or the heros gamos the sacred marriage the sacred union within our own being it's a meeting and merging of the masculine and feminine within ourselves. It doesn't mean necessarily that, you know, as I'm here in physical form as a woman, that I begin to look like a man. It's just that my feminine and masculine aspects are integrated within my being. On a different level, it means that the those two pathways for subtle sexual energy and prana to travel either side of the sushmana so we have this central channel that runs from our root to our crown and then either side of that are two other smaller channels that crisscross at each chakra um, from they come up from the root and they open up here around the pituitary and the pineal gland they're conceived of as the energy of the sun and the moon or the masculine and the feminine the black and the white or the red and the white and when those two channels are activated and release the kundalini energy into this point that's when our third eye is opened and again that's another way of expressing this spiritual awakening that can occur at that point but we can also experience it in smaller more subtle ways so for example I experience this when I dance or when I practice kundalini yoga or meditation that I access a space of pure consciousness, meditative focus and at the same time I'm aware of the energy of life of kundalini shakti moving through my being and there's a sense of the two being in communion within my being and in that state there is um, within myself a an experience and, a, and a, a state of utter and total bliss and completeness and love in the intercourse of unknowable and known an awakening will be born in you as you join with that reality which you already are so in that union within your own being, in that awakening of energies and the union, there's that sense of remembering, knowing and returning to your true eternal divine self, which is the reality that you already are. And I just want to say that if you have been enjoying these readings every day and these sutras, starting on September the 22nd, 2017, um, I'm going to be doing a two-week morning ecstatic connection practice, um, leading whoever joins the group in a daily practice for this kind of ecstatic awareness, except we'll have half an hour each morning to really dive a little deeper into these kinds of practices. Meditation, breath work, energy awareness, gentle movement, um, perhaps some yogic movement. So different practices taken from the Vijnana Bhairava Tantra, from other tantric practice, from yoga. All kinds of different techniques that we can use to tap into our nature as truth, as love, as ecstasy, which is what ultimately we are. So if you're interested in that, please uh, write a message below, message me on Facebook, or head on over to my website, shaktisundari.com, where you can find the information and register. Thank you for watching and joining me again today, and join me again tomorrow for the next reading from the Radiant Sutras, Satnam.